Our home games take place at the Burns um, in Canton, and our away games are, are everywhere. I've been to London, I've been to, uh, to Colorado, I got to go to Georgia this year, I've been to Montreal. It's, uh, it's, it's a lot of work. I mean, we put down, as I'm sure all the locals know, um, the Baltimore Blast plays there, so there's AstroTurf, um, and we have to put down plywood or wood, um, and we take sledgehammers and line it all up and make sure everything's even. Then on top of that, we have our own sport court that we have to piece together, so that goes on top of that. And then after that's done, um, it gets swept and mopped, and then people show up starting like five or six hours before the bout to lay the floor down, get the tape ready to tape at the track out. Um, people run to the bar and get kegs of beer, bake sale stuff. Um, we stay after for like two hours after the bout, cleaning everything up. People like make stuff like buttons to sell at the bouts. It's very, it's very DIY. We we love it, so we're gonna do it. Uh, if we somehow, one of the girls won the lottery and decided I'm fully funded in this league, we would be ecstatic. <laughs> but until then, we're going to have to work to keep it running, and that's what we'll do. Players, volunteers, uh, derby widows, or boyfriends, or girlfriends, or friends, or sisters, or brothers, everybody. It's not just, uh, it's not just the players. I'm a volunteer staff person, but I also help uh, coach the Charm City All-Stars and uh, the the night terrors this year. Coaching is, is really behind the scenes in the practices and then uh, what I typically do really is, is a bench manager so sort of run and control the game as it's going and you know keep everybody aware of what's going on. The game of roller derby is played on roller skates. The players wear helmets, elbow pads, wrist guards, knee pads and not much else. The track is flat, not banked. Each 30-minute half is broken down into shifts called jam. The group of eight players at the front is called the pack. The pack is made of players who play the position of blocker. Behind the pack is the two jammers. The jammers are the most important players on the track and are marked by a large star on their helmet. When the whistle blows, the jammers try to skate their way through the pack and out the other side. But they will be met with the hips booty and shoulders of the opposing team's blocker. It's not staged at all. I mean, we practice, um, you know, how to hit correctly and how to fall correctly and how to correctly take a hit and how to give a hit, um, but none of the falls that you see and none of the injuries that you see and none of um, anything is staged like wrestling is. It's, it's I mean, the technique is practiced, but it, nothing is, uh, it's, nothing's fake. <laughs> My husband felt a little better knowing that it wasn't what it, like it used to be, you know, like fake thrown punches, stuff like that. It's still tough and that's what attracted me to it. You know, the challenge of it, the athleticism, the toughness of it. It's not exactly like Whip It, it's not exactly like the movie. It's worth coming out and actually checking it out and seeing what it's all about. Uh, I guess that's kind of important because a lot of people ask about it and they immediately go to, oh, well, I saw Whip It. Well, it's so much more than Whip It. You pay to be on the league, yeah. We have to pay to cover renting the space here. Um, we have to pay for our insurance that's required by the uh, WFDA, the Women's Flat Track Derby Association, just to play um, and be part of that. Pay to rent the space at DeBurns where we have uh, the bouts, and then we charge ticket prices and stuff like that. It's completely packed with amazing personalities. Uh, truly, through the whole gamut of careers and type of people this place holds. It's pretty wild that all those people can then get together and play a sport and run a business as they are right now. It's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. We are hitting each other, but it's it's never out of malice, you know. And it's it's very unique in that because we have the different teams here, but we're still one league. We're practicing with our opponents. We're sharing secrets with our opponents. You know, the coach, you know, that runs a, a practice, like tonight, it's Chit. She's on the Mobtown Mods, which is a rival for me. I'm gonna, you know, play against them. I'm gonna wanna beat them, and she's telling me how to do it. There's no ball. 
that's a question a lot of people say like what how do you get points Jammers have skated their way through the pack the first time they're ready to begin scoring they earn a point every time they legally pass a member of the opposing team the team with the most points at the end of the game win the jammers will fail to earn points if they pass the opposing blockers illegally any player who performs an illegal block will earn a penalty so what's illegal? Elbows, tripping, back blocking, and passing out of bounds. Any player who receives a major penalty has earned a trip to the penalty box. The jam ends when the lead jammer places her hands on her hips, or when two minutes has elapsed. 30 seconds later, a new jam begins, and the whole thing starts again. I don't have a derby name yet. I'm still working on it. Well, it was originally going to be uh, Cataclysm, spelled out like cat, middle initial A, and uh, last name Clism, but it was already taken when I tried to enter it into uh, the derby website Two Evils. I've been thinking about it since I heard about derby a couple of years ago. Um, all the good names are taken, I guess, is a problem that a lot of people have, so. Well, mine wasn't accepted. Another girl had a name too close right. to mine. So everyone was already calling me Cat, and I decided I'll just go with Feral Cat. There's nothing close with it, you know, and people still call me Cat. Ornamental plaster work, do uh, restoration ornamental of, uh, you know, government buildings. Uh, historic buildings, stuff like that. I work for a, uh, like a construction firm. I work for environmental engineers, so traffic control. <laughs> I'm a small animal veterinarian. I am an assistant softball coach at a college up in Delaware. I am a research technician at Johns Hopkins University in the neuroscience department. I do brain surgery on rats. Each girl has something that they're responsible for, like an individual job. Um, we have door bosses that uh, take care of, <coughs> excuse me, kind of overseeing when everybody comes in and we have people that take the tickets and are marking off VIPs or comps that um, players get or people run the merch booth. Uh, we have people that help out with selling food, that run our beer table. Um, that make sure that the people show up to set up the floor. So everybody has not just their job when they're playing that day, but they also have a, a job that, every, that is involved with everything that comes together on, on game day. It is player run. Uh, you know, everybody has an interesting story as how they got into the early derby. I first heard about it when I was in college. Um, they had, they were just starting a league there and had a bout at the local roller rink and I went with one of my professors who tried to be in the roller derby back in the day. So she took me and we started roller skating just for fun. Um, and I've been trying to get on a league ever since. And it was between this and rugby and uh, I hadn't skated in years so I went out and I started skating and immediately fell in love. Had to do it. I didn't know it at the time, I just thought it would be a different type of sport to do, um, but it became more than just a sport, it's really a community. I actually wanted to do the artwork <clears throat> and not actually play, um, and then I saw how physical and how aggressive it was and how much fun everybody was having and I was like, why not? Some family of mine basically helped start the league and I got involved from the bottom up like that. So you could call it nepotism, I guess. and intense <laughs> in a good way yes it's when I get to be me so when I get One, to yeah. when I'm me we'll go with that <laughs> can I curse yeah it's fucking awesome 
that's all you need. That's all I need. <laughs> uh, fun, fulfilling, uh, always interesting, and uh, that's enough. That's four. Really fucking hardcore. <laughs> <laughs>